prophesy on somebody tonight. Every word you speak, you are going to create something. Anything you put your hand onto will change. And every place you step onto, you will possess. Can I prophesy on somebody tonight? And um, they used to have church dinners together and they'll choose one place where they all would meet. Amen? And so they noticed something about this elderly woman. Every time she came in and she had dinner and everything was done, she would ask if there was a room that she could use. And so they would show, point her to a room and she'd go in there and get on her knees. Whether it was cold or it was summer, she just got on her knees and she would pray. And this woman made this a habit. And she would pray in the morning, she would pray in the afternoon, she would pray in the evening. No one ever understood why she did it. But everywhere she went, this woman would spend this time. She would ask, can I use this space? Do you have a room I can use? And she would get on her knees. Sometimes she would lay down flat. She would use whatever was available, newspapers or anything, and she would pray. Someone say she would pray. So one day, they were speaking with her neighbor to try and find out a little more about this woman. And he said, I've never seen a woman who's made prayer her business. She, does, she attends to prayer the way we attend to our businesses. Wow. Wouldn't that be a wonderful testimony that someone can see of you and I, they attend to prayer like we attend to our businesses. And they said of her, she's made prayer her business. And so this woman would pray at night. She would pray through the night depending on the burden that she carried. She would just go on and go on and go on. Well, they eventually understood why she was doing it. She was born again in a town, and this is happening right here in Texas. She was born again in a, in a town that had churches that were filled, full of men and women of God who brought down the power of God. And so the word of God was rich and people could feed from that word and they had results. But then they had to move. And when they moved, they went to this city where there was no spirit-filled church, but there were churches. There was no church where the people were being fed the pure word of God. And you could tell from the results in their lives. They didn't have results. And so this woman decided she was going to go before God and she was going to ask God to send a word-based fire and brimstone church into that place. And they found out that everywhere she went, a new fire and brimstone church was born. When they followed her track record, they found every city she went into, there was no vibrant church. But by the time she moved from that place, many vibrant churches had been born. And God would move her to another city, and there was no vibrant church. And by the time she moved from that place, many vibrant churches had been born. So when they followed her, they found out that was why this woman was always praying. She was praying that vibrant churches would be born. Somebody prayed Revival City into this place. Somebody prayed Papa into Wahlberg. Somebody prayed Papa into the United States of America. Oh yes, CIC is here because somebody prayed. I said CIC is here because somebody prayed. Someone said, oh God, I'm dying of thirst. Please send somebody. I remember when we arrived here and we landed in Dallas, one of the mornings I was praying and that's the day, I believe, when I heard that we were not supposed to stay in Dallas. We were supposed to move out of Dallas. And I heard a voice was calling us. We thought we had arrived Dallas. And that's where we were supposed to be. That's where God wanted us to be. But I heard a voice. I could not distinguish whether it was a man or it was a woman. But I heard a voice. And the voice was saying, please come help us. Please come help us. I did not understand it. I didn't know what it was. But after that. I heard clearly, we have not arrived. I went out to Papa and I told Papa, the spirit of the Lord is saying we have not arrived. Papa asked me, well, did he tell you where we are going? <laughs> I didn't have the answer. <laughs> I didn't have the answer. All I knew was we had not arrived. Cut a long story short, Papa sought God. God told him we were supposed to be in Austin and here we are. Why am I telling you this story? 
I'm telling you this story to say, somebody prayed CIC into this place. And you and I have a responsibility to pray for God's next move. Nothing happens from heaven unless somebody prays. And that's where supplications come in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what are supplications? Supplications are heartfelt prayers. They are earnest prayers. I'm trying not to use big words for them. But they are heartfelt prayers. They are earnest prayers. They are prayers that come with a lot of tears. They are prayers that come with a lot of perseverance. The prayers that have something before them. And they are saying, Lord, I'm trusting to see this thing happen. The Bible says of Simeon that he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Because cause I'm talking to Bible scholars this morning. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Amen. So they spent time in the, in the temple with, with Anna. And they prayed in the temple because God had promised that he was going to send the Messiah. So everyone else seemed to have heard the prophecy and they kind of moved on. But this couple, they were not a couple, they were a prayer couple. They would wait in the temple and they would pray. Oh God, you said. Oh God, you said. Oh God, you said. And so when Jesus was born, Jesus was taken for presentation in the temple. And when Simeon saw the baby, he said, my eyes have seen the consolation of Israel. Now, Lord, your servant is ready to depart. I'm trying to give you examples of supplications. When we speak of supplications, we have a goal. We have a target. And we're praying things through until we see that happen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Someone say supplications are poured out. Tell your neighbor supplications have been poured out. It's not a casual prayer request. It's not taking the microphone and saying your own thing. It is having something in mind and ensuring that that thing comes to pass. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you think of supplications, you think of humility. When you think of supplications, you think of bringing everything you are and everything you are about to say under the word of God. What is God saying about this situation? What is God saying about that person? Is it the will of God that this person be saved? Or is it not the will of God, for example? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what causes the fervency because I get to know the will of God. I know it is the will of God for this thing to happen. Well, the question is, why then is it not happening? That's where the fervency is born. Because I know the will of God concerning the matter. I know this is supposed to happen. Why is it not happening? So when you look at the, the, the body of Christ today, you find out that there are some things God has promised us. In Psalms chapter 3 and verse 8, he says, ask of me. Ask of me. I'd like us to read it. There are some things God has promised us. The question is, why are these things not happening? There you go. There are some things God has promised us. Tell your neighbor, there are things God has promised me. Why are they not happening? So I'd like us to read that together. If you have it, would you please rise? Psalms 3. Yes, please. Psalms 3, 8. Yes, please. Let's read that. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Salvation Selah. belongeth unto the Lord. Salvation does not belong to the government. Salvation does not belong to any other power but unto the Lord. And your blessing is upon your people. That's what the Bible says. Well, why are we not enjoying that blessing? You may be seated. 
So I know the will of God because I just read it. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. But when I look at some people, I don't see the blessing of God on them. Does that make sense? So that means there's something that doesn't add up. Well, my Bible also tells me that God is not a man that he would lie. And he's not a son of man that he would repent. Has he spoken and will he not do it? So if God has spoken, then God will do it. So if then I know God said it, salvation belongs to him, and I don't see the blessing on the people, could it be that there's something missing between the salvation that belongs to the Lord and the blessing that should be on the people? Praise the Lord. Healing is the will of God for us. Prosperity is the will of God for us. Wholeness is the will of God for us. And he says, thy blessings, Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Amen? You, you see the list of the blessings. But when I look at a particular person, I don't see those blessings in manifestation in their life. Is there something that's missing between the salvation that belongs to the Lord and the absence of the manifestation of the blessing? Amen? So supplications come right there. Supplications happen in the gap. I know that salvation belongs to the Lord. That means that this person is supposed to enjoy the salvation of God. That person is supposed to enjoy the salvation of God. This person is supposed to enjoy healing. They're supposed to enjoy breakthrough. They're supposed to enjoy restoration, forgiveness of sins. Amen? But if it's not happening, then something must be activated. We need to come in with a strike. That's going to talk, take away, cut off everything that does not belong there. And zoom in on the problem and release the person from that stronghold. Does that make sense? So supplications is you and I coming into an understanding and beginning to act according to what God has poured out. Praise the Lord. Someone please help me with this. It's getting hot. Someone says supplications. supplications. Someone says supplications. supplications. So supplications have been poured out. God says, you remember Zechariah 12, 10? What does he say? He says, I will pour out the spirit of grace and supplications. So the spirit of grace is poured out and the spirit of supplications is poured out. So when grace is poured out, if I don't embrace grace, I will not enjoy grace. Can I say that again? If uncontested grace has been released, if I don't embrace it, I will not enjoy it. It's the same thing with supplications. The spirit, su supplications have been poured out, but if I don't embrace them, I will not enjoy the reward of supplications. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm taking you a little deeper. Are we going deeper? So I'm taking you a little deeper. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to give you some, some scriptures this morning that are going to help us pray. Go with me quickly to Luke chapter 10 and verse 2. Luke chapter 10 and verse 2. If you're there, say amen. amen. It shows us one of the reasons for which supplications can be used. Luke chapter 10 and verse 2. If you've got it, would you stand? Let's read. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. 
Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. Pray ye there is supplicate. You may be seated. So pray ye the Lord of the harvest right here is supplicate. In other words, come before him according to his word. Come before him with a plea. Come before him in perseverance because he has said it and he cannot take that word back. That's why the Bible says the word of the Lord will not return to him void, but it shall accomplish the purpose for which it was sent. Come before him, praise the Lord, with a plea. Come before him with his word. Come before him and say, God, you said. Amen? Tell your neighbor, God said. God said. Tell someone behind you, God said. God said. The prayer of supplication, whenever supplications are poured out, they are poured out for many purposes. This morning, I'm only zooming in on this one. The, the supplications, every time you and I are coming before God with supplications, we are coming because something is not right somewhere. Something is contrary to the word of God. I remember many years ago, I did not know the terminology supplications back then. But something happened to me. One of our children was not well. And I found myself saying, I heard myself say, but Lord, we pay our tithe. And you said you will rebuke the devourer for our sake. Why then do we have to have this situation and the devourer is not being rebuked? I questioned it. Amen? Amen? And because I questioned it, it became a burden for me. Because I saw what God's word said, and I was refusing what my natural circumstances were telling me. Wow. All right. But that was because something in me questioned the reality. I said, no, something is not adding up. Because God said this. Amen? And so they, they gave this child medication, and they said this child was going to be on this medication for the rest of their life. And something in me rejected it. But I did not have the answer. I didn't have the answer. I didn't know what to do with the situation. But there was something in me that was rejecting this thing. So I took the medication and I started giving the child the medication. But the whole time, that thing, someone said that thing. We refer to it as that thing. But it is the spirit of supplication that's being poured out. Amen. You sense that uneasiness. You sense like there is something that makes you uncomfortable within. Who knows what I'm talking about? There you go. Many times we refer to it as that thing. It is the spirit of supplications. So I went before the Lord. And every day I'd cry out. Lord, you said, Lord, you said, Lord, you said, Lord, you said. When the, the medication, the bottle, it was one bottle. When we ran out of that one bottle, the spirit of the Lord said to me, that's it. From the day we ran out of that bottle, we have never needed another bottle. This happened when this child was two. We've never needed another bottle. So that thing that we refer to as that thing is the spirit of supplications. It's a knowing feeling that's telling you this situation does not add up with the word of God. You can do something about it. So this morning I came to tell somebody you can do something about that problem. You don't have to settle. You can do something about it. Tell your neighbor you can do something about it. Tell your neighbor you can change this situation. You don't have to settle. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus was speaking and he said, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Whose harvest is it? 
Whose harvest is it? Whose harvest is it? Okay, stand up. We're going to read together. Luke chapter 10 and verse 2. If you're ready, let's read. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. It is his harvest and he's looking for laborers. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said, pray. What did Jesus say? Pray. What did Jesus say? Pray. I told you it means let the spirit of supplications be activated because you need a surgical strike you need precision you need targeted efforts are you with me because the laborers are out there many times people think the laborers of the harvest are the shepherds no many times people think the laborers are the ministers it's the pastor's job to go and preach the gospel. It's the pastor's job to go and evangelize. It's the pastor's job to and to and to. You all have the list for the pastors. Amen. But that's not it. He says pray. He says do what? Pray. Why? Because you are probably one of the laborers, but you keep shifting the responsibility onto someone else. In supplication, you see what is supposed to happen. Many times we pray and we're praying for things to change. In supplication, when you pray, you can see you, the adjustments you have to make. In supplications, when you pray, you can actually see the adjustments that you have to make. And that's the part that many people do not like. Many people don't like to think of the fact that there could be adjustments on their end. There could be some changes that have to be made on their end. Many people don't like to hear that. Many people would like to know that we don't need to go out for evangelism. I was a little disappointed yesterday, by the way, because it was very nice weather on my end. And my children got up and they were all set and they're like, mommy, we need to leave for evangelism. We need to go. When are we leaving? I was very disappointed because I thought this was a wonderful day and there was someone crying out for us to come. And if you and I are going to be effective and targeted in our evangelistic efforts, we, we must not ignore the voice that's speaking within us. As I speak with you now, you can hear that voice. Some, some of you can sense him. You can sense him on the inside. That's not a voice to ignore. That's the Lord speaking. That's the Lord doing what? Speaking. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Go with me to John chapter 4. What can supplications be made for? Supplications can be made for the harvest. They can be made for the laborers to be sent. What can supplications be made for? John chapter 4, verse 35 and 36. He says, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. When Jesus was speaking about lifting up your eyes and looking on the fields, it wasn't a natural look. Are you there? Can you see it? It wasn't a natural look. Jesus had spent time in prayer and he could see something. Until you and I go into supplications, we will not see as God wants us to see. There are some breakthroughs and some blessings that are right next to you. It will take supplications to help you walk into them. 
There is healing that's right next to you. It will take supplication for you to walk into it. There is a child who is at the door waiting to come back. It will take supplications for you to open the door. Do you understand what I'm saying? Many times we think we don't want to go deep. But what if I to told you that all of your answers are on the other side? Jesus said to the disciples, let us go over to the other side. Do we have any disciples here this morning? Do we have any disciples here this morning? If I was preaching a message and saying God will bless you, oh, the disciples will be alive. If I was saying I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus, everyone would be amen. If I was saying your children are coming home today, someone will shout hallelujah. If I was saying I hear wedding bells, everybody will go, it's my bell. <laughs> but what I'm telling you this morning is bigger than a bell. What I'm telling you this morning is louder than that wedding bell. Because supplications will help you see exactly. They will help you see exactly. Supplications are targeted prayers. Supplications are targeted prayers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Someone say, it's time to pray targeted prayers. Tell your neighbor, it's time to pray targeted prayers. He says, look. Lift up your eyes, look on the fields, for they are white or ready to harvest. Now, I want you all to stand up and read verse 36. What can supplications be made for, and why should we do it? Verse 36, one, two, three, go. Hold on, read that again. Say that again. Now where it says, he that reapeth, put in your name. Where it says, he, put in your name. Who is the wage for? Who is the wage for? Who is the wage for? The wage is for the one who reaps. What does that mean? That the one who does not reap has no wage. All right, then you may be seated. The wage is for the one who reaps. So what does God do for the one who reaps? He gives you a tool to reap with. When reapers go out, they have sickles. They have tractors. They have all kinds of things. Amen? Supplication is one of the tools you use to rape. Supplication is one of the tools you use to, to rape. We are too quick to give up. We give up too easily. We have lost the ability to hold fast. There was a time when, when they wanted to uh, teach a young woman something and she had had children. They wanted to teach her perseverance. Don't ask her, you have had children, have you not? And she'll say, yes, I have. I said, then you got it. <laughs> there was a time when that's how they taught young women. They said, you have had children, have you not? Then the young man will say, yes. They say, you got it. And everyone else around her didn't understand anything. But the young woman got it. And the woman who was talking to her got it too. What they were saying is, you know how to persevere. But today, you can say to some women, you have had children, haven't you? They don't get it. Because it was too easy. They just went and someone else popped the baby for them. You get what I'm saying? Are you with me? Are you with me? I have news for you, church. There's a difference between being converted and being born. 
There's a difference between being converted and being born. You can be converted, but you're not born. You can move a child from one house to the other. That child is not born. Are you with me? Jesus said we must be born again. He didn't say we must be converted. One of the reasons we have forgotten about the surgical strike of God is because we have been taught conversion. One of the reasons we don't go out for evangelism is because we have been taught conversion. One of the reasons our evangelism is not effective is because we have been taught conversion. So when I meet somebody, what do they tell me? I, I have my own church. When I meet somebody, what do they tell me? I was born in so-so and so church. Well, when was the last time you went to church? Uh, uh, uh. But because we have been taught conversion, we don't know how to convert things and turn that situation around and let them know, no, sir, it is written, you must be born again. Jesus never said you must be converted. Jesus said you must be born. So if, if you are not born again, you cannot enjoy the blessing of Psalm chapter 3 and verse 8. The blessing of Psalm chapter 3 and verse 8 rests automatically upon those who are born again. It is a completely different spiritual atmosphere. That blessing fights for you. When you are born again, you don't need to know your father's name. He fights for you. When you are born into this world, you don't know where the stores are. You can't buy clothes, but someone clothes you. They fight your battles for you. You don't have to stay naked. You're covered. The blessing is resting on you because you're born into that house. Does that make sense? So when you and I are born again, the blessing of God rests upon us. And that blessing fights for us. And we can call upon that blessing anytime. But when we are converted, uh, we, when we are converted, we move with every other baggage we had from the last place we came from. I just, it's a conversion. It was a yellow car. I just moved the baggage out of the yellow car into a red car. I just converted. I'm taking you somewhere you've probably never been before. But I'm saying to you that God is launching his surgical strike. And when that strike is released, it's going to help people know whether they're born again or they're born against. It is time for you and I to know where we stand. The willy-nilly, soft, no good, not taking us anywhere gospel, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Hear me. It does not work. It doesn't work. Because we are a generation of hard knots. We are a generation that is hard to crack. So the soft willy-nilly gospel does not work. It is another gospel. It is something contrary. That's why it cannot bring in the harvest. It's bringing in, it's gathering those who are converted. Revival City exists not for the converted. Revival City exists for the newborns. That's why it's called revival. God chose to do it that way. God wants a revival, a rebirth, a renaissance. A rebirth. When Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus, he asked him, he said, are thou a teacher of the law? And do you not understand these things? In other words, what am I saying that is so hard for you, Nico? What's the matter with you? 
Because they were living in a time when there was not enough power. There was no oomph in the word that was coming. So the people were not being born again. They were being converted. We came up against that spirit of conversion in Revival City and we continue to stand against it in the name of Jesus. I said the spirit of conversion is not welcome here. I said the spirit of conversion is not welcome here. I said the spirit of conversion is not welcome here. You are either born again or you are born against. There is no middle ground. You're either born again or you are born against. Anything that is converted is going to counter the, the, those who are born. When Ishmael came into Abraham's life and Isaac was born, Ishmael constantly countered, challenged Isaac. Converted people cannot enjoy the glory. No, because you just, you just moved house. You just moved house. That's all that happened. You just moved house. Someone say, I must be born again. When I am born again, I will understand the need for another person to be born again. When I am converted, I don't see anything wrong with another person being converted. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. There were many preachers and many churches. Why would Jesus have to come and preach again? Have you ever asked why? Why would Jesus come and have to die? Well, there were many preachers. Because Jesus had to come for those who were born and who will be born. Of God. What does it mean to be converted? The Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 12. Let's read it as a matter of fact. That was not my, my message, but it came up. So let's read it. Let's read it quickly. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Read on. Which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. As many as received him, he gave them power. But you see, when you're converted, you are born of the will of, the, of man, of the flesh. I want to be born again. So you'll hear sometimes they'll say, those who want to be born again come to the altar. And we all come to the altar. Right? Or, they'll say, you'll hear someone say, no, my family is a Christian family. We go to church. We know God. Amen? We know God. Well, that is being born of the blood. So you have of the will of the flesh, which is my will. I decide I want to. And you have of the blood. And he's saying, no, that's not it. Sachidu, what does your version say? He's saying, that's not it. He's saying they have to be born of God. They have to hear the word of God. The word of God has to pierce their hearts. And they have to be born anew of that word. That, yes, let's hear what Sachidu's translation says. John 1.12 says, oh, John 1, 12, yes, please. He says, um, let me figure out where to read from. He was, no, he came to his, is that the one? Yes, please. The verse 12. Verse 12. And 13, yes, please. He says, and, but whoever did not want him, who believed he was who he claimed, and would do what he said. He made to be their true selves. Their child of God's selves. These are the God begotten. Not blood begotten. Okay. These are the God begotten. Forget about everything else for now. These are the God begotten. Not blood begotten. Amen. 
So I go out for evangelism, thank you, Stachidi, and someone says, I've been going to church. I've been born again since they tell you some age. All right. There is a difference between being blood begotten and being God begotten. There's a difference. The converted are blood begotten. The born again are God begotten. You see what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? Now, the God begotten, the God begotten are born out of supplications. So I took time to explain that so you can understand the difference. The God begotten are born out of supplications. Let me show you that quickly in Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66. The God begotten are born out of supplications. The blood begotten are converted. The will begotten are converted. It's like a convertible. Have you ever seen a convertible? One moment it has the roof on, the next moment the roof is off. Convertible. And people pay a lot of money to have a convertible. People go a, a long way to be converted, but it doesn't mean that they are God begotten. Did you hear what I said? People go a long way to be converted, but it doesn't mean that they are God begotten. And because I'm not God begotten, I cannot recognize someone else who is in need of the God that I don't have. Because I don't have it. You cannot give something you don't have. I don't have it. I don't sense a burden. I don't supplicate for you. I can walk into your life, act like I'm paying a price, and I can walk out any day. But the God begotten are not that way. The God begotten are Romans 8, 14 believers. When the, when the, when the going is tough, they still have to stick it out. Because the God begotten are born. The God begotten are never converted. Amen? Praise the Lord. So Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 8c. I'm going to, I can read all of it for you all. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation burn at once? The last part is what I want us to focus on. For as soon as Zion prevailed, she brought forth her children. As soon as Zion travailed, thank you, sir. As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. So as soon as Zion travailed, she prevailed. Why did I call it the surgical strike of God? Because it is in travail that we prevail. Yes. It is in travail that we prevail. It's easy to push a button and the roof of a car opens. It's not as easy to push a baby. Oh, come on now. Don't, talk, don't act like I'm the only one who understands these things. Have I got women in the house? Yeah. You can push a button and the convertible, things will just change. I've seen my son with his toys. He says, mommy, come and see. I say, see what? Is it not supposed to go on two wheels? He says, no, mommy, hold on. And he pushes a button and the wheels flip. And he pushes another button and they flip again. The car was on its belly, now it's on his head, but it's still moving. I'm like, I don't get it. What's going on? <laughs> and it's worse than James Bond these days. And they have these big tires, they call them monster trucks. I'm like, but you can push a button and convert something. But you, you cannot push a button and push a baby. The baby must go through the motions. And the carrier must have the strength to go through the motions. And so they tell a woman, you have to be careful now. You have to be careful. So when it comes to evangelism, great care must be taken. Because we are about to birth. When it comes to evangelism, great care must be taken because we must prevail. Once it's time for that baby to pop, you cannot afford to be lazy. You cannot afford to be lazy because it's either that baby comes or does not make it. 
So when it comes to evangelism, preparation must be made. When it comes to evangelism, we need to understand that this is not a casual request. When it comes to evangelism, and we are going into his harvest for his own to be born. All the preparations that go into a woman having a baby must be taken into account. That's a message for another day. The days of casual evangelism are over. I didn't get an amen and I don't expect you to give me one. The days of casual evangelism are over because somebody's life depends on it. Somebody's health depends on it. Somebody's wealth depends on it. Somebody's prosperity depends on it. Somebody's destiny depends on it. I said somebody's very existence depends on it. A price has been paid for us all to be in Revival City. I have had the privilege of watching Papa. I've had the privilege of watching the pain of birthing one. The privilege of watching the pain of bringing forth another. And those who've been with us from the beginning can testify to some of what I'm saying. I've seen the pain. I've seen the tears. I've seen the sweat. I've seen the sleepless nights. Because when a woman has to bring forth, if it's at 1 a.m., they'll tell you, woman, you cannot sleep now. Everything in your body says sleep. But the nurses tell you, you dare not. You've got to stay awake. Am I talking, mothers? Who knows what I'm talking about? You cannot sleep. You want to sleep, but you cannot afford to sleep. We want to sit on the back seats when it comes to evangelism. But I came to announce to you that it's time for us to launch God's surgical strike. Because unless we launch that strike, we cannot expect the enemy to sit back and just let the harvest go. It's going to take a strike. It's going to take accuracy. It's going to take precision. It's going to take strategy. It's going to take military tactics. That's what it will take. I said that's what it will take. That's what it will take. And because we understand wages... God says, the one who will take time to apply strategy, the one who will take time to prepare, is going to receive a wage. Because God knows that we understand wages. Someone say, I understand wages. Oh, someone tell your neighbor, I understand wages. I understand how much I'm being paid. And, and, uh, and the fact that I'm not being paid. I, I, and, and, and I may not say it, but I'm not happy when I'm not being paid. Come on now, tell your neighbor. And, and I really expect to be paid a little more. You know, I, I really expect... Mm, I'll leave it there. But you get what I mean. God knows that we understand wages. He knows we do. So he says, for those who will do this, there's a wage. For those who will do this, there is a wage. So God is not sending laborers out for nothing. There's a wage. There's a wage. I said there's a wage. I said there's a wage. God is not an unjust hirer. There's a wage. I said 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 there is a wage. Now that I announced there's a wage, who's coming with me for evangelism? <laughs> I knew it would be all of us. <laughs> there is a wage. But you and I have to travel. You and I have to launch the surgical strike. You and I have to be very precise. You and I have to be very accurate. But you and I have to use the right tools. You and I can no longer afford to be casual. I said we can't afford to be casual. If this woman could pray, and everywhere she prayed, the church was born. And everywhere she prayed, the church was born. Everywhere she went and prayed, the church was born. Everywhere. Right here in Texas. And when I read that story, I thought, oh, wow. That's why we had the Bible belt in Texas. For those who understand what I just, that's why we had the Bible belt. 
Because there was a woman who was a demolition. Everywhere she went, she wreaked havoc. Nobody saw her, nobody heard her. But she was exercising. She was strategic. She was not asking for anything else except the spirit filled, Holy Ghost led church. And for those who have lived in Texas long, long, you know, for a while, you know that this place was called, there was a Bible Belt. Correct? Correct? Very good. Now my question is, what happened to the Bible Belt? I'm going to ask again. What happened to the Bible Belt? I'm asking again. What happened to the Bible Belt? Supplications. There was a woman on earth who was calling on heaven. And so heaven answered. When she went home to be with the Lord who took over the baton. Revival City, we are here to run with that baton. I said we're here to run with that baton. I said we are here to run with that baton. I said we are here to run with that grace. Revival City, we are born to pray. Revival City, we are here to pray. Revival City, we're here for people to be born again. Revival City, we're here for people to be healed. We're here for souls to be saved. We're here for people to enjoy the blessing that is upon them. That's why we're here. We're not another church. We don't believe in casual. Casual doesn't cut it for us. It has to be all or nothing. I said all or nothing. That's what it's got to be. How many of you still love me? And you know it's okay if you don't. I'll still give you a hug. But that's it. We need to pray. We need to hold the baton. If one woman could pray all these churches, spirit-filled churches into existence, what can God do with us? If one woman on her knees, on her stomach, could pray so many churches into Texas, and people in other states did not pray to have the same, but God answered one woman. How many of us are there here this morning? Will God answer us? Will God answer us? Will God answer us? If one woman could take Texas, can we take Wahlberg? If one woman could take Texas, can we take Wahlberg and Jarrell? If one woman could take Texas, can we take Wahlberg, Jarrell and Georgetown? If one woman, someone say one woman. Come on, get up on your feet this morning. If one woman, God could answer the prayer of one woman. Can God answer your prayer for your husband to be saved? Can God answer your prayer for your wife to be saved? Can God answer your prayer for your children to be saved? Can God answer your prayer for your family to receive salvation? Can God answer that prayer? If you believe God will answer that prayer, lift up your voice right now. What are you asking God for? What are you asking God for? Will God answer the prayer for one to be saved in your house? Will God answer the prayer for your husband? For your wife, for your son, for your daughter. Will God answer the prayer for your mother and your father? Will God answer the prayer? Will he answer church? Will God answer church? Will God answer the prayer? Will he answer that prayer? That's the question you and I need to ask ourselves. We need to ask ourselves, am I going to sit on the back burners? Or am I going to come before God? And I'm going to ask for the salvation of Wahlberg. And I'm going to go out and I'll give them the word of Lord. Am I going to ask for the salvation of my neighbors? And I'm going to take them to go receive this word. Do I understand that the harvest is ripe? Do I understand that I need to supplicate for the Lord of the harvest to send me into that harvest? Will you go this morning? Will you go this morning? Will you go this morning? That is the question. You many times are looking at us and expecting us to do something for you. Well, God is saying, I want to do something with you. 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 Stop. Don't clap. Hold on. Where did she go? There was a lady. Where is she? Come, 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 Katrina. Come, come, come here. Come, come. Everybody stretch your hands towards her. Come here. Everyone stretch your hands towards her. Everyone stretch your hands towards her. Stand right here. Everyone stretch your hands towards her. 
We've been wondering what is at stake. Everyone, we're going to pray for Katrina. I see the glory of God, the glory of God, moving in your direction. And if you embrace that glory, I hear evangelists, 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 evangelists. So the enemy thought if I strike her first, then God cannot find her. He thought if I strike her first, then God cannot find her. God is going to do a work in you. It's going to start from your head. It's going to go right down to your feet. Lift up your hands. God, open your eyes. Look at me. God is going to do a work in you. Right now, I see the work has started. Right now, come on, stretch your hands towards Katrina. Start praying for her. Start praying for her. Start praying for her. You don't pray, they're praying for you. God is going to do a work in you. It's starting from your head. I can see it started. It started. It's going to go all the way. I can see a work that God has done in your heart. You are just don't have the strength. You don't have the strength to run with what God has given you. But God says you're my child. God says you are my child. God says you are my child. God says you are my child. He says I am your father. He says I paid the price for you. He he says, I paid the price for you and I began a good work in you and I will perfect the work that I began in you. The Lord God says, I will turn your beauty to ashes. He says, I'll wipe away your tears. Are you still praying for Katrina? God says, I will wipe away your tears because I see a vessel. I see a vessel. I see your feet anointed to walk. I see your feet anointed to walk. Anointed to walk. Anointed to knock on doors and call people out and tell them Jesus loves you. You have no idea what is done in my life. I see God. I see God. Father, let your glory, let your glory bring her, bring her, bring her, bring her. Let your glory, Lord. Let your glory, Lord. Let your glory, Lord. Let your glory, let your glory, let your glory, Father. Bring her to me. Bring her to me. Let your glory, Lord. Let your glory. Keep praying for her. 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 In the name of Jesus. Keep stretch your hands towards this girl. Stretch your hands. Pray for her. Pray for her. Pray for her. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the glory of God cover Katrina from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, to the soles of her feet, to the soles of her feet. One more. Leave her down. Leave her down. Let the glory of God, let the glory of God, Mashe, come here. Mashe, come. Let the glory of God, I see somebody whose mouth, whose mouth God wants to touch. I see somebody whose mouth God wants to touch, whose mouth God wants to touch. Every time I call someone out, as the Spirit of the Lord leads me, I want you to stretch your hands towards them and to pray for them. Because as you do that, there is a wage. As you do that, there is a wage. I see a mouth that God wants to touch. But I hear the Lord asking you, will you let me do it? The Lord is asking, will you let me do it? Is somebody praying for Mashe? Is anybody praying for Mashe? Is anyone praying for her? Is anyone praying for her? Many times you're qualified by your brokenness. But the Lord God says today, I'm giving you a new name. Today, I'm giving you a new name. Can you please do something with my mic? I'm struggling. The Lord God says today, I'm giving you a new name. Today, I'm giving you a new name. Today, I'm giving you a new name. The Lord God says, he's giving you a new name. In the realm of the spirit, you will be called by that name. And as I call you by that name, in the realm of the spirit, so shall it be in the natural. They have been calling you by a strange name. In the realm of the spirit, they've been calling you by a different name. They've been calling you by a strange name. A name that leads you heavy, a lamb that leaves you wandering, a name that makes you go around in circles. They've been calling you by a name that keeps you in stagnation. You mean well, you want to do it, but there's no strength to do it. The Lord says, I'm changing your name. I'm changing your name. I'm changing your name. And as I change your name, I will change your pain. Your pain will go. Your shame will go. For the shame, I'll give you double. For the shame I'll give you double are you receiving it anybody for the shame I'll give you double for the shame I'll give you double
double. I'll give you double. The Lord says, I'll give you double. If you have grace, receive it. Bring me Lauren. Bring me Lauren. The Lord says, I'll give you double. I'll change your name. And I'll give you double for your shame. I'll take away your pain. I'll take away your pain. I'll take away your pain. The Lord God says, the Lord God says, Lauren, lift up your hands. Keep praying, church. Keep praying, church. Keep praying, church. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. There's somebody on this side. There's someone on this side. You're asking God for healing. 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 I want you to go ahead and lay your hand on your head. Lay your hand on your head. Lay your hand on your head. It's supernatural. Don't look at me. It's supernatural. What God is about to do is supernatural. Lay your hand on your head and start receiving that healing. 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 I see blocked. I see something is blocked. I see something is blocked. You're supposed to be having like a, like a, like a, like, um, like a faucet, like a faucet, you know a faucet? So when water gets, flows through a faucet, it's supposed to flow freely, but your water is not flowing freely. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Okay. She says, I know what I'm talking about. Somebody, are you praying? Somebody, are you praying? Anybody, are you praying? Stretch your hands towards Lauren. Stretch your hands towards Katrina. Stretch your hands towards those standing here, Mache. Stretch your hands towards them and pray for them and pray for them and pray for them. Stretch your hands and pray. Stretch your hands and pray. Stretch your hands and pray. Oh, there's something that's blocked. There's something that's blocked. It's blocked. You're not having free flow. You're not having free flow. Somebody are you praying? Anybody are you praying? The prayer of supplication. The prayer of supplication. If one woman could pray and God could send spirit filled churches, can God save one person? Can one person be born through us can our prayers be any worth can they be of any worth at all can they be of any worth at all can they be of any worth at all bring her can they be of any worth at all can they be a challenge you in the name of jesus i challenge you in the name of jesus oh i challenge you in the name of jesus salvation belongs to the lord listen lauren need to believe what God is saying about you. All right. God says salvation belongs to him. Salvation. It means healing, wholeness, deliverance. Everything that you need is in there. Everything, baby. Everything is in there. Everything. Deliverance is in there. Breakthrough is in there. Acceleration is in there. Salvation. When he says the salvation of the Lord is upon his people. If the salvation belongs to the Lord. When he says salvation belongs to the Lord. That's what the Lord is saying. But it's blocked. 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 Say, oh Lord, open me up. Say, Lord, open my eyes. I want to see you. Tell him, Lord, open my eyes. Lord, and tell him, oh Lord, open my eyes. I want to see you. Oh Lord, open my eyes. Oh Lord, open my eyes. I activate you. 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 That's right. I activate you. I activate you. I activate you. I activate you. Flow in the name of Jesus. 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 Flow. This is time to flow. It's time to flow. Bring her back to me. Bring her back to me. You keep praying. You keep praying. The power of God is at work here. The power of God is at work here. Take a glass to somebody. The power of God is at work here. The power of God is at work here. You must come out. I said you must come out. I said you must come out. I said it's your day. 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 day. Bring her back. I'm going to give you one more. From today when you step out of here. You speak in a new way. You act in a new way. You react in a new way. You take back territory. You reclaim the ground. From the day you step out of here. As soon as you step out. Take it. In the name of Jesus. 
Pentecostal. Today is your day. I said, Today is your day. I said, Today is your day. You're coming out, Lauren. Keep telling God, open my eyes. You are coming out. You must come out. I said, You must come out by fire, by force. You must come out. I said, You're coming out. I said, You're coming out. Somebody say, I'm coming out. Someone say, I'm coming out. Say, Salvation belongs to God. Salvation belongs to God. I'm coming out. Say, I'm coming out. Say, I'm coming out. Say, I'm coming out. As I clap my hands and pray today, 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 I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I love us. 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 Someone say I'm coming out. Someone say I'm coming out. Shh. Lift up your hands. I see you over there. The spirit of God is moving up on someone. You sense like something is coming up, like you're about to throw up. You sense like something is coming up, like you're about to throw up. I declare over you, anything that God has not planted in your life, the fire of God is going to destroy it now. Anything God has not planted in your life must go. I said anything God has not planted in your life must go now. I say must go now. Somebody say anything, anything. that God has not planted in my life must go, in my life. Must, go must go now. Must go now. Must go, must, go must go now. Must go now. Every, Every now. voice uh, Every that voice. God has not spoken uh, into not my destiny. Uh, I silence you now. I silence you now. I silence you now. Every power. Every power that is holding me back holding from me running back. into my destiny my right now, right I, now. Paralyze you. I paralyze you. I paralyze you. I paralyze you. I paralyze you. As I clap my hands and pray, start refusing them. Any voice, any power, any voice, any power, anything that God has not planted in my life right now, in the name of Jesus, 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 I reclaim my ground, I take back my life, I take back my life, I take back my life, my soko to robo sete, lendeli amandobo, rekete shitaraba, baloko paloko, rekete ni abasodo, resi amama soko to, resi darabasoto, I take back my territory, I take back my ground in Jesus. Pray for you. You're searching for answers. You're asking God, why me? What about mine? Do I ever get anything? You know some things, but you're asking, what about me? Do I ever get anything? Do I deserve anything? Do I ever get anything? Do I ever get anything? Look at me. You will not lose anything. I say you will not lose anything. I say you will not lose anything. Don't be afraid. Lift up your hands. Say, oh God, teach me to trust you. 
Say, help me to trust you. Tell, say, help me to trust you, Lord. Say, help me to trust you. Somebody pray, oh Lord, help me to trust you. Come on, say, oh Lord, help me to trust you. So, oh Lord, help me to trust you. Say, oh Lord, help me to trust you. Say, oh Lord, help me to trust you. Say, oh Lord, help me to trust you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, help me to trust you. Come on, say, oh Lord, help me to trust you. Say, oh Lord, help me to trust you. As you trust God, you will discover what God has for you. Someone say, oh Lord, help me to trust you. Say, oh Lord, help me to trust you. Trust you, oh Lord, help me to trust you. an appointment for him, please. Say, oh Lord, help me to trust you. Say, oh Lord, help me to trust you. Say, oh Lord, help me to trust you. Oh Lord, help me to trust you. Lauren, the thing that's blocking you is voices, voices, voices that are blocking you. They've got you on lockdown, all right? Yes, voices are blocking you. They've got you on lockdown. So depending on how badly you want to be free, you will come out. So the Spirit of the Lord is showing me he's already made a way for you. He's already made a way. But voices have blocked you. You're blocked, totally on lockdown. All right? You desire it. When that desire becomes an ardent, burning desire, you find yourself breaking free. Remember Samson. What did I say? Have you ever read the story of Samson? You need to go read it again. All right. Read the story of Samson. When you want it badly enough, you will break free. You just see yourself breaking the ropes. You find yourself breaking the ropes. I see that happening for someone else in there also. You I find yourself it. breaking the ropes. Did you hear what I, I said? It. God will help you. God will help you. You can go back to your seats. God will help you. You can please book, schedule an appointment for him, Brandon. God will help you. Listen to me, church. If you're here this morning and you came and you're asking God for healing, we want to agree with you. Amen? We want to agree with you. If you're asking God for healing, come quickly. You're asking God for healing, come. Come quickly. If you're asking God for healing this morning, you're here and you're asking God for healing, come quickly. Come quickly. If you're asking God for healing, come quickly. If you're asking God for healing for somebody, come quickly. It's all supernatural. I said it's supernatural. I said it's supernatural. Did you hear what I said? I said it's supernatural. Someone lift up your hands. Someone lift up your hands. Say, oh God. Say, oh God. Say, oh God, church. Say, oh God. Say, I believe by your stripes I am healed. I believe the spirit of grace has been poured out. I receive that grace. I receive that grace. I receive that grace, the grace for healing, great grace for healing. Receive it in the name of Jesus, the grace for healing. Receive it in the name of Jesus, the grace for healing. Receive it, receive it, the grace for healing. Receive it in the name of Jesus, the grace for healing. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive grace, receive grace, receive grace. Say by your stripes, say by your stripes, say by your stripes. I am healed. 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 It's supernatural. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. I receive supernatural healing. I receive supernatural healing. I receive supernatural healing. Some people are receiving some other I things but they right now. Healing in your home. Healing in your children's lives. I receive, receive it. it right now. Receive it right now. I receive Breaking it. out of cages. Coming out in the name of Jesus. Breaking strongholds. Coming Hallelujah. out in the name of Jesus. Breaking those ropes that are keeping you bound. Coming out in the name of Jesus. Breaking out Jesus. all those ungodly ties that are keeping you down. Coming out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For the next few seconds, I want you to lift up your voice and to thank God. I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my healing. Thank you for my thank healing. Thank you for my healing, oh Lord. Thank you for my healing. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for deliverance, oh Father. Thank you for deliverance. Oh Lord, thank you. Oh Lord, I Come thank on, say thank you in your own words. Oh Lord, I say thank you in your own words. Say thank you in your own words. Say thank you in your own words. Oh yes, 
Jesus said thank you. Thank uh, you for the oh, mother oh, said thank you for that child's healing. Uh, mother said thank you for that child's healing. Uh, said thank you for that child's healing. Come on, said thank you in your own words. Said thank you in your own words. Said thank you in your own words. Thank you, O Lord. Lord, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. Oh Lord, we thank you. Oh Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the spirit of grace. Thank you for the spirit. And thank you for the spirit of supplications. Thank you, Lord. Well, thank you, Lord, because more and more we know why you brought us here. You brought us here, Father, because the spirit of supplications has been poured out upon CIC. The more we pray, the more lives will be changed. The more we pray, the more people will be born again. We prophesy of our world, beg, you will be born again. We prophesy of our world, beg, you will be born again. We prophesy of our world, beg, you will be born again. We prophesy the blessing of the Lord will rest upon world, beg. We prophesy the blessing of the Lord will rest upon world, beg. A blessing of peace. A blessing of health, a Thank blessing of healing, a blessing of wholeness, a Thank blessing of complete salvation. We prophesy world back for Jesus, 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 world back for Jesus. If you believe that this morning, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you go home today, you must continue to pray. Until you and I pray, God can do nothing. When we pray, we are saying to God, you promise us this. And this is what we see. We desire your blessing. We want nothing but your blessing. Pray that over yourself. Pray that over your children. Pray that over your spouses. If you're not married, pray for the spouse to come. Did you hear what I said? Pray. Someone say, I'll pray. You go into groanings and let the Holy Ghost pray. Pray for Wahlberg. What did I say? Pray for Wahlberg. That the prosperity of God will flow and rest upon this place. Let them know that God is here. Let Warburg know that God is here. Did you hear what I said, church? We are here to do what? To pray. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? I'm going to be calling on the women to join me to pray one of these days. And it's going to become our culture. We are women who are called to pray. I said we are women who are called to pray. We pray for husbands, we pray for sons, we pray for daughters. We pray for God to remove evil from our midst. We are mothers, we are called to do what? To pray. Because we have not prayed as mothers, our children have gone into captivity. You say, well, I have prayed before. Yes, but you need to get to another level that's called supplications. You need to pray the prayer of supplication. Did you hear what I said? We have been casual way too long. God bless me. My name is Jimmy. Give me, give me, give me. We need to start praying for God to do something that makes sense in someone else's life and I'm going to be calling on the women one of these days because we, it's time to pray the days of casual prayers are over how many of you would come out to pray with me it could be here at church it could be on zoom it could be wherever but we need to pray if things will change it will be because our knees hit the ground it will be because the makeup ran to be because we didn't care about our nails. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear mothers? Did you hear what I said? I'm going to receive the offering this morning.
ever wondered how to take your message, your music, and your movies to the whole world? Word and Spirit TV makes it easy and affordable for you to be on a global platform anywhere. A 24-7 Christian channel featuring some of the leading ministers of the gospel, Christian artists and film producers. Word and Spirit TV gives you access to more than 20 million viewers who browse daily and watch our free streaming content through the internet. Roku TV, Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV, anywhere, anytime and on any digital device. Access to the channels is fast and smooth and includes previews so you can see what's on before selecting. Making it easy to browse and watch live TV. Join Word and Spirit TV today. For more information on how to become a content partner, visit www.wordandspirit.tv. Email us at info at wordandspirit.tv or download the app on your device and start watching Word and Spirit TV today. Word and Spirit TV. Seeing the invisible.